Okay, next podcast then. This time topic 3.4, all to do with effective people management. Uh, And this little video is all about motivating people. So why is motivation important for a business? And in fact, what is motivation anyway? Well, definition of motivation uh, in, in a work sense is it's, it's a desire to complete a task. That's all it is. Um, so why is it important for businesses then? Well, if workers are motivated, they're more likely to be committed to a business. They're going to work harder. That might result and should result in them having higher productivity. Remember, productivity is output per worker. It might result in higher quality work if workers are motivated. That makes sense. And we can think of the advantages for a business. If its product is of higher quality, it might be able to sell for a higher price. It might have better customer service, better reputation. It might mean that staff are more flexible. If they're motivated, they might be more prepared to do different jobs and be a real benefit to the business in that sense. So be clear about that. Motivation is extremely important for a business. To help understand what motivates workers, it's important to understand what makes them take a job and what makes them want to work. The model we will use in this course is Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Maslow was an American researcher who, working in the 1950s, he identified that people actually have a different number of needs. And he put these needs into order and he called this his Hierarchy of Needs. Um, Now, this model, um, Maslow identified that people have, first of all, they have physiological needs. We all have needs for food, shelter, warmth. Very, very basic needs. What motivates us to work? We have to satisfy that one first of all. When we have satisfied our physiological needs, we have safety needs. And on screen there, you can see that that involves security of body, employment, resources, our family. So we've satisfied our physiological needs. Then what comes next for us is, is, is our safety needs. Maslow then talks about love and belonging, the importance of friendship and family. He then moves in to talk about higher order needs. On screen, you can see that self-esteem is very important. It's to do with confidence and achievement. Do we have respect of others? So when we've satisfied our other needs, it's self-esteem that motivates us. The final need that Maslow identified is self-actualization. This idea about being creative and having our our, our views valued uh, and allowing us to achieve and to reach our potential. And as I say, self-esteem and self-actualization are the so-called higher order needs. Right, so using that model, how do businesses motivate their workers? Well, first of all, physiological needs, pay. It helps to meet basic needs. It allows us to pay, f- allows us to pay for food and shelter and warmth. Linked in with that, fringe benefits. Remember, fringe benefits are those ad- additional things to pay, such as company cards, company cars, private health insurance. Um, that help us and motivate us to work that bit harder. Working conditions might be important. Think about those safety needs that Maslow identified. Contact with others, working in teams. Again, important in terms of Maslow's hierarchy. Are there any promotion opportunities? If there are, these are more likely to motivate workers and opportunities to make decisions and to use initiative. These are ways that businesses can motivate their workers. Okay, so that's how businesses can motivate their workers. Let's now have a look at the implications of that using Maslow's hierarchy. What are the implications of these different needs of workers? Well, first of all, physiological needs. How can businesses help to meet that need of workers well pay levels and working conditions clearly are going to be one way that businesses 
uh, address that need of workers. And if they want to motivate their workers and need to move through that hierarchy, that's the starting point. In terms of safety needs, well, job security, clear job descriptions, accountability can all help workers to meet that safety need. What about love and belonging then? Well, team working opportunities, the opportunity to work with other people, that again is a big motivator. For self-esteem, having status, recognition for achievement, power, these are ways, these are things that the business can provide. So how can it give workers status? How does it recognise achievement? Because that is going to help to motivate its workers. And what about the biggie then? self actualization What can a business do there? Well, offering chances for, for workers to develop new skills, to meet new challenges. And I've put there the opportunity to reach one's potential. These are big, big drivers for workers, for employees. One thing to bear in mind when looking down those implications for business is that some of those will cost money. If businesses want to motivate their workers, they have to accept that some of this will cost money. Promotion opportunities, having giving workers the chance to, um, to, to develop and to reach their potential, is not cheap. It's often not cheap. But what does the business get out of it? A highly motivated workforce. Okay, there's the theory. Um, what's coming now are three questions just for you to have a think. You can pause these while you do ponder. Uh, have a think. Make sure you're comfortable with this. If not, make sure you revisit your notes. Uh, or see me if you if you need to go through any of the of the content here. Question one. Question two. And question three.